Hello everyone! Welcome back to another virtual Mother Nature and Me. It's a beautiful breezy day here at the garden. It's cloudy, nice and nice big rain clouds, just how I like it. Not so hot. Only thing missing is you. We miss you guys. So today we're gonna do a very special science and art edition of Mother Nature and Me. So I have one of my favorite books called Ada Twist the Scientist. I love this book. This is about a little girl who was curious about the world. She wanted to know how everything worked and why it worked and when it worked and what might make it not work curious and I think that's very special it's so important to question things to wonder why and to not always just accept anything that anyone tells you it's always good to ask why and to question things so Ada Twist the Scientist I'm excited to read this well I'm letting everybody get a chance to log on I will do a little science project with you guys this one is small and actually it's quite popular now. You might have seen it already. But this is a little science experiment about germs. Right now we're all being so careful of germs, right? Washing our hands, using lots of soap, wash for 20 seconds. Well, let's see how good that soap works. So I have here a bowl with some water in it. It's just water in here. And I'm going to use some black pepper. And the pepper is going to represent the germs. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle it into the bowl. Let's see if you can see it here. You see the pepper? Okay, now I have some soap here just regular dish soap. Let's see what happens when I put the soap into the water. Whoa! Look at that! Oh my goodness! All the germs went to the side of the bowl. That's pretty cool. Let's see what happens if I do the same thing. I'm gonna pour some more water but this time, I'll use cinnamon. Do you think the same thing will happen with cinnamon? The cinnamon will represent the germs. Let's see what happens. And this is what a scientist does. Just because one experiment worked, doesn't mean they're all gonna work, right? So, let's see what happens with the cinnamon. It did work, but it looks like you need more soap. Put more. Hmm, it didn't work quite as good. I think the cinnamon creates a real coating. So if you had cinnamon all over your hands, you might need to use extra soap. But it did break it apart a little bit. Look at that. Now, what would happen if we use dirt from outside? Let me clean this off. This is the last of my water. And here's some dirt from outside. Okay, let's add our soap. Hmm, I think it takes a lot of soap to break apart the dirt. But you can see that it's starting to break apart, right? It's slowly starting to break apart. Now, if I was going to be washing my hands. Let's squish this up and this will represent us washing our hands. What happens is all the dirt sinks down to the bottom. So what that tells me as a scientist is that just putting soap isn't enough. Like if you were washing the dishes you wouldn't just put soap you have to scrub. We need a good, good scrubbing. 
because after I after I mixed it up, all the dirt sunk to the bottom. So the soap works, but you got to do the scrubbing. Very cool. And hi, Abby. Hi, Kai and Nala. Thanks for letting me borrow this book. This is one of my favorites, Ada Twist the Scientist. Now, I think that, yes, yeah, so a lot of people are logged in now, so I'll go ahead and start. I had another science project, but I don't have enough water to do it. That's okay. We have a really fun art project, too. So anybody who wants to just take a minute while I'm reading the story, and grab um, the supplies. All you need is some paint, a piece of paper, and uh, some food scraps, like your compost. So um, like maybe some lemon or apples or potatoes, anything that you could use, you know, stuff that was starting to go bad. This is a good way to use it up. We're gonna do stamp painting with our food scraps. We're going to play with our food. Hi, Bianca. This is your first time here. Noah and Liam, welcome. Welcome. We're just in time. We're going to start our story now. We're reading Ada Twist, The Scientist. And then we're going to do a fun craft project with, with food scraps, paint, stamp painting. Okay? So let's get started. Here's Ada Twist. <laughs> Ada Marie, Ada Marie said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and make her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. You see Ada Marie? busy experimenting even as a baby trying to figure out how everything works and that's just what happened when Ada turned three she tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could and her parents yelled stop as all good parents would Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and simply asked, Why? That was her first word, why? You see her climbing up the clock? <laughs> Why does it tick and why does it talk? And why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep and her, as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Why does it tick and why does it talk?
Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. As she got bigger and bigger, so did her questions. Ada was wondering about everything in the world. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But, much, but this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Look at that. It looks like she was doing some experimenting with, with paint. That's what we're gonna do today too. And all her friends are cheering, go Ada Twist, go Ada Twist. <laughs> that looks like a messy fun. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing, when a horrible stench whacked right up, right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada which got her to thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? How, how does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. That was the moment that Ada loved best. What do you think the stink was? Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought to be true, the terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. <laughs> she tested and tested, but Ada soon knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. Do you guys know what a hypothesis is? A hypothesis is like a guess. It's like an educated guess. So if you're experimenting with something and you're not quite sure what the answer is, sometimes you make a guess, a hypothesis, and then you experiment to test it out. See if your guess was right. And if it was not right, then you move on to the next hypothesis and you test that out. And you keep doing that until you figure out the answer. That's what a scientist does. Then, zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. Hmm. The cat couldn't make such a stink on his own. You need perf, it needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested, the test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. Oh, she was gonna put the cat in the washing machine. <laughs> She's really testing everything out. <laughs> Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the ch to the thinking chair now by the time we count three. Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What? Ada queried. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. 
She wasn't trying to make her parents upset. She was just trying to experiment. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and Stu and the cat, and how her experiments made such a big mess. Did it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those questions led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Oh no, look at that. She's scribbling on the wall. Why, what, how, and when? <laughs> Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What will we do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They whispered, they smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. Look at that. The great thinking hall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and a heart that is true they remade their world now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact she asked lots of questions how could she resist it's all in the heart of a young scientist <laughs> wow. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but to learn all she can with her friends in grade two? They, will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? Oh, they're all trying to figure out what that stinky smell was. Now she's got all her friends being scientists and her family. That's great. <laughs> the end. Very cute story. I love this book, Ada Twist the Scientist. And what's special about being a scientist is you ask questions. So important in life to ask questions. To not just accept everything for what you see and what you hear. Ask lots of questions and do lots of research. So, another thing about being a scientist is you think out of the box, right? You're thinking outside the box. So today our art project 
is going to be a little bit outside the box. When we do painting, painting projects, we normally use what? A paintbrush, right? Today, we're going to use food. <laughs> Let's paint with food. So if everybody got a chance to go and grab some paint, paper, and some food scraps, this is a great thing to do with your food when it's gonna, uh, when it's about to go bad. Just make some art out of it. So, let's paint together. I have some paint here. I have some purple, green, and orange, and pink, and yellow. Now make sure you guys show me pictures later. I want to see what you painted with the food. So, what should I start with? Hmm. Do you guys have a potato? Let's start with a potato. Right now, when we're trying to not make a lot of grocery trips to the store, potatoes are good. Most people have these in their house, right? Because they last a long time. Cut your potato in half. And I'm going to make a bright yellow sunshine with my potato. <laughs> wow. This is fun. And how about if I use a long carrot? Dip it in the orange. Oops. And I'll use the long carrot, the side of it, to make some sun rays. <laughs> and what else should we use? Hmm. Do you guys have broccoli or cauliflower? Let's use some broccoli. Broccoli is really good to paint with because it's like spongy. Okay, so let's do... Maybe I'll make a little flower out of my broccoli. I'm going to dip it in the pink. Wow, this is so cool. Those will be my little flowers. And then, I'm gonna put some stems on my flower. How about some celery? Use some celery, I'll dip it in the in the green. This is even more fun than painting with a paintbrush. Let me tell you, I like this better. <laughs> and look what I have here. Y'all know what this is? This is a loofah. Have you ever gone to the store and seen a loofah in the bathroom section? It's, it's um, like people use it to take a shower with and scrub your body. Loofahs grow in the ground. We grow loofahs here at the garden. And this is what it looks like after it dries out and you crack open the skin and then you let it air dry. Looks like that. So let's paint with a loofah. Now you probably don't have one of these at home, but you could use a sponge. You might have a sponge, a, bath, a, a dish sponge. You could use that. That would be nice too for painting. Um, I'm gonna dip it in my purple.
This will be a tree in the background. I'll use the brown to make a tree, a tree trunk. I'll use my carrot, dip it in the brown, make a little tree trunk. My goodness, there's falling mangoes all around me. I'm getting scared, guys. I'm gonna get popped in the head with a mango. about that. Does that look like a tree behind the flower? Okay. My picture is done. Another fun thing to do with these is, you know, it doesn't have to be like a picture picture. It can be something abstract. Something where you're just stamping. Let me use my apple. Apple slice. And just stamp for fun. It doesn't have to be a, a, a painting of something. You can just do some stamping. I think my favorite is the broccoli. Now, if you dip a little bit of, say, the broccoli in one color, and then you dip the other side, half of it, in another color, you see this? I have green and yellow together on the same piece of broccoli then you're gonna get a really cool pattern you see two colors in one <laughs> that's the art project today guys I hope you enjoyed that. This is a really fun thing to do. And like I said, if your food is starting to go bad, especially, cut it up and bring out some paints. Make some art with it before it goes bad. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I miss you all. And um, also last Saturday, thank you for everybody who came out and helped make our plant sale a big success. That was very helpful and it was so nice seeing everybody. Uh, we'll, we're going to be selling some more plants this Saturday, so feel free to come by. We'll all be masked and gloved um, from 9 a.m. to noon. We have lots of plants for sale, lots of delicious herbs, um, basils and sage, and uh, we have watermelon. We have all types of things for sale, so come on by if you're looking to get out of the house this Saturday from 9 to noon. All right, everyone, have a beautiful Thursday, and I'll see you again soon.